from the left. He dirty roll.
center of your 50 mile per hour. Crowds will rapidly reposition the nose four times flying a square path through the sky. runway, 
carrier aviators must touch down between four wires stretch across the deck of the ship. To do this, we use an optical landing system commonly referred to as the ball. During the final portion of the approach, the air crew and landing signal officers, known as paddles, work together to get the aircraft safely aboard. Let's listen in on the final approach. Tower control lines clear. I got you the same on the backup. Back paddle working 24 over 18, down the angle. Right ball, 5 4, manual. Red ball. A little high. There's my ball. He's with it. Power back on, bolter, bolter, bolter. I'm going to get bolter. I can't raise this one tripod leg. I can't get in the position I need to be in, and it really sucks. Ladies and gentlemen, from the right, the Super Hornet photo pass. Well, now I, now I really did it. All right, so here's the stuck leg right here. I'm going to yank on it. It's at the Navy Tailhook Legacy Flight Demonstration. What you're about to witness is dedicated to keeping Naval Aviation's ties to its proud legacy alive and well. Tailhook Legacy Flight pairs venerable warbirds from our Navy's past with a high-tech weapon system known as the F-A-18 Super Hornet. Through these unique and dynamic formation flights, Sorry about all that, guys. To inspire the best it's live TV. Best generation of young Americans to join the ranks of Naval Aviation. Through the hard work and dedication of private individuals and nonprofits, many of these glorious warbirds are still flying today. The pilots and maintainers play, the, play, a, play a critical role in the history of naval aviation, actively flying for all to see. During the air show season, several different vintage warbirds participate in tailhook legacy flights. Some are the only flying example of their type in this world today. Okay, it's much better. Ladies and gentlemen, look to the left as Corsair, the Super Hornet, approach in section formation. The Corsair flown by Mr. Lou Herschel is the lead aircraft with the Super Hornet flying the wing position. You'll be able to hear the distinct growl of the Corsair's Pratt Whitney R2800 18 cylinder radial engine. Hi. Power weapons made by the Super Hornet's two General Electric F414 turbofan engines to maintain position in the formation. From the left, the Legacy Flat Pass. Are you looking at me? Are you looking at the planes? Or what's going on? You're on camera now. Everybody's watching you. I got this man staring at me. He never seen a camera. Look at this combination. Yeah, it's a great combination. But I'm streaming it on two different separate channels. On YouTube. You ever heard of that? Oh, Germany. 
Good to meet you. Here we go, the pass is coming. Look at that. strike fighter up today. It fills several roles in the If you can remember it, I don't have cards. The flexibility needed to engage any threat he or she may face. Missions on the ride include air superiority, fighter escort, suppression of any air defenses, all weather day and night precision strike, tactical reconnaissance, and air revealing. All right, we're doing some sort of a little dedication run here. Might has a key reason you can sleep soundly knowing that the U.S. Navy truly owns the night. Its unique ability to take off and land from the care of fierce surprise weapons and any conditions are its hallmark. It is expected to remain in service until at least 2035. The pilots are now repositioning the formation for a second pass. This head-on pass will give you an outstanding view of the business and of the preeminent fighters of the respective generations. Ladies and gentlemen, look straight ahead as the Rhino and Corsair approach the tail of Lexi Flight head-on pass. Much ready as the legacy formation approaches for the photo pass. The legacy formation. For 108 years, naval aviation has been at the tip of the spear defending our nation, while also at the forefront of technological advances which have made our country. Yeah, it's easy. It's three words. It's called the Tampa Channel. Ships at sea. So the naval air crews are taking the fight to them every today. A long legacy of excellence and nice perseverance precedes them. Now, from the right, the legacy photo pass. Oh yeah. How about that? Not again. That's okay. That's okay. Nice and Corsairs saw combat in the Pacific and were also used extensively by the Navy Marine Corps in the Korean War. By the time production of the Corsair ended, over 12,500 were built, giving the Corsair the longest production run of any piston engine fighter produced in the United States. Racking up an impressive 11 to 1 kill ratio during World War II, the Corsair was also used as a fighter bomber, a role that excelled at in Korea. On their final pass, the Tampa Lacey flight will approach from behind the crowd, Astro Center form an imposing pitch out maneuver for landing. After the break, the Corsair will continue its downward turn to make the landing. The Super Hornet will reverse one time in the vertical to achieve separation for a carrier break in the landing. and from behind the crowd, the pitch out maneuver.
Foot Legacy Flight Demonstration, and thank you for helping us celebrate more than a century of development in U.S. Naval Carrier Aviation. Give it up for the Navy, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? And we're just getting started. Ladies and gentlemen, the F-18 you see here today is one actually used to train our pilots and whistles at Strike Fighter Squadron 106, based at Naval Air Station Oceana, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Grouse and Popo and myself serve as instructors teaching new air crew how to fly and tactically employ the Super Hornet. Currently, there are 33 operational Super Hornet squadrons in the Navy defending freedom and democracy around the world. It takes many talented and dedicated young men and women to maintain, fix, and fly these aircraft. Help us thank the entire Rhino Demo maintenance team and our maintenance professionals here at the show. They are Chief O.J. Davalier from New Orleans, Louisiana. A01, Kevin Chapman from Warrington, Virginia. 82, Alan Bjork from Texas City, Texas. AM2, Craig, Craig Whitaker from Naples, Florida. Amy 2, Will Williams from Pocomo, Indiana. AT2, Brendan Montgomery from Holt Mills, North Carolina. And A3, Atlanta Saul from St. Helens, Oregon. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the entire United States Navy, we thank you for allowing us to demonstrate the capabilities of the F-18 Super Hornet. If you're interested in meeting the air crew, checking out our merch and learning more about naval aviation, please come visit us after the show. Corsair and the Navy Legacy Flight. Let's give it up for those who serve in the Navy, for the Navy, and for that great presentation. Thank you, guys. The Rhino Demonstration Team, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we're just getting started. You have got the uh, reigning and 12-time now U.S. Aerobatic Champion.